Welcome in to this Thursday edition of the flagship. I'm your host, Zach Barry. Joining me, as he always does, Greg Jones, each and every week. LB's Meat Market. Baseball, man. Uh, look, all we had to do was just start talking about it here on the show. Talk about the lineup meshing, people finding some roles, arms in the bullpen, starting to uh, figure yeah, out I mean, their role. Yeah, look, ten wins. What happened? I mean, ten wins in the last eleven games. It's not bad. So, how we doing, man? You know, uh, I'm still uh, I'm still trying to figure out the name of the Wake Forest's coach that we were going to hire two weeks ago. Um, (laughs) But anyway, uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's great when your team is on the uh, Central Standard Time Zone and doesn't have to fly back and forth. I really feel like that's a you know, um, I'm not trying to give an excuse but uh it honestly looks like it it might have been just a bad move you know to play, play out in hawaii for the first um uh, <laughs> first uh, week but yeah well uh, yeah no you can definitely tell the fisher kid is uh we we got our money's worth there for sure um so uh just uh ethan leger is is come i mean is is really stapled stapled himself i mean and you've got um, some guys that have filled in the gaps and, you know, who knows, um, this team's kind of might be sneaky. Good. Uh, Josh, uh, uh, Mallet's his wife, a mom come, came in and, um, she, um, she told me that, that, you know, this is a, a, a really good team and they're going to surprise her. So I'm going to, uh, get on Miss Mallet's side and, and back her, uh, famous, her lucky earrings. She said she's had these lucky earrings since the national championship. So, okay. Uh, so I'm 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 uh, I'm on the I'm on the sneak and you know look at Mississippi State you know uh, uh, they were picked at the bottom you know with us so uh, and they you know beat LSU like they did so uh, you yeah. can't I mean there's just it's it's impossible it doesn't matter how many years of experiences um, somebody has in uh, sports uh, uh, whatever sports you, you have to put the uh, the bread in this, the the bread the bread is in the pudding so uh whenever the product gets out there and it starts playing you can tell but uh it's definitely f- uh, filled in nice it's actually been really awesome and 10 out of the last 11 games is a nice feather to have in your hat especially after last night you know southern miss was on fire uh, they were yeah. a good golf good ball club and to go down there and have a tight game uh for you know six to seven innings but break it open you know in the later parts you know who knows what this uh, what this team can do, but um, you know you're going to get another test this week. Uh, you're not going to get any days off in this uh, baseball conference. Uh, I don't think there's not an SEC team that's not going to that's going to be you know bad. Uh, so you're not going to uh, get an easy two out of three anywhere. So um, uh, we'll see what we got this weekend, and who knows? Uh, keep the ball rolling. Yeah, ten of the last eleven, fourteen of the last sixteen. Uh, almost going back to that super regional series during the national championship run that was in Hattiesburg. Ole Miss is now five and one against Southern Miss. Um, so pretty good run. And, against... and beating Memphis also. I remember, you know, a couple of years back, you know, we had a trouble with Memphis all the time. So now, yeah. you know, now we're beating Memphis. So it's, yeah. Uh, I mean, look, all, all jokes, I know uh, all jokes aside, I know Ole Miss and, and Mississippi state people like to poke fun at Southern Miss um for you know kind of being that that third wheel in the state but that's a good baseball program and like you said they were they were playing really good baseball uh up until last night Ole Miss runs away with it wins eight to three um I think the big story is Riley Maddox um another quality start uh only allowed two earned runs six innings and um struck out six uh, one of the earned runs was was kind of cheap. Um, the first inning, they had a massive shift on. Leadoff guy pokes one down third base, uh, gets a double. They move the runner over and then uh, get a single. Uh, you would think that if Andrew Fisher's playing in his normal spot, it's an easy ground ball out. But, yeah, scattered two earned runs. And, uh, yeah, struck out six. So, um, two and one on the year now on the bump. That's a really good arm in the midweek. He was – he was throwing the ball well last night. All speed stuff was really snapping. He was uh, pitching backwards early in the game, which, look, midweek, I know it's Ole Miss and it's an SEC team. Um, they've got good players. But, look, midweek starters are not going to be as good as the the weekend guys. But Riley Maddox was up there just 
throwing sliders right up there, first pitch of the at bat, getting ahead of batters. I think that was a key for him just to get some confidence early on. He's an in-state guy. You know, he wanted to play well in Pearl. Um, but yeah, uh, Luke Hill, um, rocky start to the season for him. Three for four last night, double, two runs, stole a base. And then Ethan Leger, probably one of the hotter hitters in the country, hit an absolute bomb for his fifth home run of the year and had three RBIs. So, um, yeah, kind of the the thing we were talking about with this lineup and all the new faces and guys having to find their role. I personally liked putting Jackson Ross in the two spot in the lineup last night. Yep. Um, he works counts. Uh, we talk about Fisher having a major league approach. Ross is the same way. He's going to work counts. I think last night his first AB might have been 14 pitch at bat. Yeah. Um, I mean, so, you got and that uh, the freshman at second base making that huge play, you know, just uh, at the eighth yeah. inning. Uh, yeah. Just uh, it's, it's stuff like that that you, you know, you find and you can, you work with it. You know, I know he didn't get the start next, the, the next day. And I know there was a couple fans that were kind of scratching their head. Why, why doesn't he not get the start the next day? Look, it's, it's, it, you, you gotta, you gotta know, you gotta know your role. You gotta know, you gotta step up to the plate when you need to. So uh, just, you know, you gotta get, you gotta give it some time, man. You know, you can't, yeah. we all, we all can't be Twitter uh, head coaches and we all can't be, uh, you know, uh, wanting to do, you know, what you want to do. So just got to let the dice roll sometimes, you know, you got to let them figure it out. And it seems like it's kind of gotten figured out a little bit. So, but yeah, mm-hmm. Riley Max, that's huge down the road because, you know, say you have a trouble start on a Friday or Saturday and he can come in and do some middle relief uh, and get you some innings. So uh, definitely a big positive on that end. Yeah. Um, offense did enough. There was a, Spot of bother there in the middle of the game. Ole Miss had bases loaded with the meat of the order up. Could not tack on um, anymore. Uh, it was a 4-3 lead at that point. It seemed like a huge missed opportunity. Um, but Maddox was just settled in. Uh, Ryan Rodriguez, Braden Jones, Mason Nichols, and Connor Spencer come in and slam the door. And then, like I said, when that when, – when, when Ethan Leger hits one 412 feet, it helps a lot to uh, get some insurance. But, yeah, huge win. Um, I mean, Southern Miss is going to win a lot of games. Uh, they're 14-7, and seven, probably got a good shot at winning the Sun Belt um, and probably host – or maybe not hosting a regional. Maybe maybe they do, but uh, they're, they're probably a postseason team. I mean, team. they'll be a two-seed somewhere for sure. I mean, they'll, yeah. and, they'll, and they'll make somebody really nervous about, you know, being in their um, yeah. region. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, a good win, uh, anytime you can win one against Southern or Mississippi state on a neutral site, that's a big win, two really good programs inside the state. And like you said, Mississippi state rough start to the year. Um, but yeah, took two or three from a really good LSU team. And, and now all of a sudden you've got the two teams inside the Magnolia state that have kind of figured things out. So, um, yeah, like you said, it doesn't, it doesn't ease up at all this weekend, uh, Ole Miss will travel to Tennessee uh, to play the number five team in the country in Knoxville. Three games set there. Um, it's it's early in the year, but I do think this is a this uh, is a huge. Yeah, big huge like yeah. a lot of questions will be answered. It's not going to be like Ole Miss gets swept or only wins one. It's not the end of the world, but some adversity is going to happen. New faces are going to be thrown into the fire. Uh, young guys are going to be tested by a really good program. Um, this is kind of one of those measuring stick series early in the year where Mike Bianco and that staff will kind of learn what they have and and where they need to go from there. Yeah, and I, and I hate to bring up, you know, when Tennessee came in, you know, the last time to Oxford and, you know, they really laid it <laughs> on it. So, but with that being said, I'm pretty sure that's going to be reminded, you know, like you have you have to have – that kind of attitude, you have to be like, look, these guys, you know, uh, came in and, you know, took it to us. So, like, why can't we return the favor? So, you have to have that mindset. You have to literally come in and say, ain't nothing's going to phase us, regardless of how many people are in the stands. You know, we're going to come, we came here to do a job, to do a job and get it done. So, um, I think it'll be really interesting this weekend. I, I'm anxious to see because, you know, a lot of people were, kind of worried about the first uh, SEC weekend with South Carolina and what are we going to do, you know, uh, against a quality team. So um, who knows? I mean, I feel like 
uh, this team could be a top uh, 15. To, I mean, they're 17 in one poll, but um, I mean, why couldn't they be a top 10 team? You know, there's plenty of talent on the roster uh, to get that, uh, that that ranking and to why not make a run. But uh, I know uh, at the first of the year, uh, there was a lot of people skeptical and I was skeptical, you know, but uh, you know, you got to give these guys playing, playing time. It's not uh, a game and, you know, an inter squad game is totally different situation. So uh, maybe they'll step up to this weekend and uh, who knows, as long as it's just they're competitive and they're fighting and, um, you know, you don't want something like, uh, eight, uh, you know, eight, one in the, in the fourth inning and you're like, Oh, wow. Uh, we, we need, you know, we need to, or you can just stick to the game plan and, and chip away at that lead and, you know, try to win nine to eight, you know, you can't, you can't not be, you know, not be in a, uh, get down on yourself in your situation regardless of who you're playing. So, uh, just going to see what they got this weekend. It's a tough test. Ole Miss 16 and five overall now, two and one in the SEC after uh, winning the series last weekend against South Carolina. The Rebels will stay in the SEC East this weekend um, against Tennessee. Um, look, I, I think right now you have to feel really good about where Ole Miss baseball is at the moment. Because, look, sure, a, a, a sweep to open SEC play would have been great, but two of two of three is is all you need. Yeah. If you take two out of three every weekend, then, you know, you're in a good spot, uh, regardless of your yeah. situation. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Regardless of your midweeks, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you look at it now, Arkansas is the only um, SEC West team that's 3-0. and um, Everybody else, Alabama, Mississippi State, Ole Miss, 2-1. and one. Uh, over in the East, Vandy and Kentucky swept their opening series against Georgia and Missouri, respectively. And then you've got Florida at two and one, Tennessee one and two. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's a loaded conference once again. I mean, you look across the board, Vandy's already almost to 20 wins. Alabama's at 18. Uh, Tennessee's at 19. Kentucky. Yeah. And, you know, Alabama's Kentucky be shocking sneaky. people. Yeah. Alabama's going to be sneaky good. They, they have pumps money in that program they pumps money in the yeah. stadium and uh, i mean that's what you got to do i mean this is a business situation now this is not like uh you know getting some nice college kids to go out and put put the jersey on and you know win some baseball games this is a this is a, almost a professional you know semi semi pro situation yeah and our boy tj mccants is, is having a good start to the year for the crimson tide so good for him um but yeah i i think it's as good a start as you could ask for after uh, not only just a rough start to the year, but you know, we say it every week, but I mean, just basically a brand new starting nine, you lose your two best pitchers. Um, and now you look up and it's March 20th, March 21st, and you're 16 and five. So um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really interested to see how the next couple weekends go in sec play. Uh, I, I, I don't expect Ole Miss to win every single weekend series. That that that's crazy, just because the SEC is so tough. But um, they're playing some really good teams. What's uh, next? Who's next weekend? Uh, next weekend for baseball, as I'm efforting live here on the show. Come on, website. Uh, we have got Kentucky hosting Kentucky. So there you go. Oh, right. So um, after Tennessee, you'll have a midweek against Austin P and then hosting a red-hot Kentucky team. So, yeah, back-to-back -back SEC uh, – or, excuse me, back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back SEC East opponents um, before traveling to Arkansas for a big one over in Fayetteville. Um, and then after that, you host Mississippi State, and then you go to Georgia, host Alabama, go to Auburn, host A&M, at LSU to close out the season. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's, uh, there's going to be no, uh, it's going to be all, all, all no. gas and no brakes. I mean, there's, <laughs> yeah, I mean, no rest for uh, the weary. It's going to be tough. But um, I mean, you um, know, they, 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 they go through Omaha challenge, they go through workouts and weights and everything. And, you know, they're, they're, uh, they'll, they'll be, they'll build, they're built and bred for, for this job. That's for sure. Yeah. But look, I, I think it's, this is going to be good. For, in multiple ways where, you know, the strength of schedule is going to be top notch because of the sec and because you're playing a lot of the better sec programs, but also you're, you're going to be tested. You're, you're going to have to go through the ringer and 
if you come well, out, I think the- Iowa would probably be a decent uh, 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 couple wins because they're probably win the Big Ten, and of course yep. Southern Miss is going to be a, a nice win. But um, you know, yeah, you just got to keep one foot in front of the other, to, uh, take care of business, and uh, see what we got Friday. You know, uh, obviously there might be some velocity, different velocities uh, uh, this weekend. I mean, I know that Tennessee throws 70, 97, 98, 90, you know, but hey, look, you know, uh, Andrew Fisher's locked in right now. I, I, I would not throw him anything down and in right now. Um, so, um, but that's what you're, that's what you expect right now, you know, especially heading into SEC play. Uh, that's why, you know, you have those two non-conference weekends, you know, to get prepped for this SEC schedule, because as you, you know, just named out, you know, you got Kentucky who, swept swept their opening series coming in and then you've got arkansas which that's always a huge rivalry so um yeah there's gonna be there's gonna be no uh no break so uh i will promise to keep uh them filled up and um with all the post game uh spaghetti ribeye spaghetti and uh i think we did ribs last weekend um so yeah we'll uh i'll i'll, I'll make sure they're they're fueled up uh I don't know if I can put any anything extra in, but we'll find out, you know. <laughs> uh, all right, real quick before we get to uh, March Madness, as uh, Greg is wanting to reveal his uh, not the full bracket. We'll we'll get to the we'll get to the the good stuff. Final Four. We'll see who he thinks. I like sleepers. I like sleepers. I, I'm, I'm I'm okay. I mean, you know, you, we can I'm, we can talk that. We can we can get into it. I, there's a lot of. I mean, anybody can say, yeah, I like Purdue because that guy's really tall. Or, uh, well, you know, or I Purdue's, like UConn because they won last year. You know, that's, yeah. you know, that's Purdue. That's, Purdue's that's burned a lot of people that in, in yeah. recent years. But yeah, yeah well, I'm, not can, a, I'm not a chalker. We are not we'll, the ones guys. We'll talk 12 fives. We'll talk 11 sixes. We'll get into that. Uh, I do want to remind you um, show is brought to you by LB's Meat Market, 2008 University Avenue. You can go see Greg um everything in house sausage you've got the lane train special you've got the ice chest over there you can go in there and grab some some good deals some burgers some steaks get you some stuff for the weekend uh if you're grilling out uh watching Ole Miss baseball on tv as they take on the balls um but yeah go check him out uh you can get you a meat man hat you can say hey to greg tell him that uh you heard about it on the podcast he might throw something extra in your bag yeah always mention the podcast always mention the podcast that always always makes me feel warm and fuzzy that people actually listen to us and look (laughs) here's the thing you go get your protein you go say hey to greg you get you a meat man hat the thing that goes best with a meat man hat is if you swing on by after you go to lb's you just hop back on seven and just go up and exit get off sisk avenue go to college corner get you a new polo get you a new t-shirt quarter zip anything and everything uh you can think of they've got it over there Ole miss um apparel they've got gifts they've got tailgating supplies if you need stuff for swayze field you want to get a head start for the grove you can go over there and and check out what they've got um at their disposal scott the folks over there uh over four thousand square feet uh the space is is great um, and look, if you're not local, if you're not in Oxford, you can check them out in Flowood or Ridgeland. And if you're not in the state of Mississippi, you're not coming through, you can go check them out, collegecornerstore.com. All right. So um, you mentioned you're not chalky. I was pretty boring with my bracket. I kind of feel like this year has the potential to get kind of chalky, Sweet 16, Elite yeah. 80. Um, I look there's some sneaky good matchups that could develop there there are I do th- there are a ton of 12 fives and, and 11 sixes that are really fun um uh I mean that tr- have potential to like go past the sweet 16 I really I mean you know you look <laughs> um I mean I don't know I mean like that the North Carolina State just I mean I do feel like maybe they might run out of gas I mean five games five days um that i mean that's that's a lot but when you're playing good and you're confident and you're um and, you, and you're enjoying what you're doing and that sort of thing you know uh it, it, it carries on so um i really like auburn for some strange reason you know that interview with bruce pearl for like, good reason you know, um 
they they dominated Florida in the, in the second half. Uh, they and so I kind of like Auburn. They're sneaky good. I, I just don't think Houston has the depth. Um, you, you score forty points in a championship game. That's bad. I mean, you look at Virginia last night. They and had how many? I mean, fourteen points at halftime. So they made just, five shots in the first half. The last night, the the Nashville Predators scored more goals than Virginia made field goals in the first half. Um, yeah, that was bad. We I, I talked about it on on the show earlier this week. I don't think Virginia belonged in the tournament. Uh, no. There were se- several teams that got snubbed. Um, but you look at some of these intriguing upset bids the ones that jump out to me i like grand canyon st mary's I love grand canyon i love know that's it. i know that's kind of blasphemous here on an old miss show to to say that bryce drew is is doing well but the lopes are good st mary's was kind of up and down and then i think you uh you could also look across the way and talk about mcneese yeah. Going up against Gonzaga, Will Wade did a hell of a job turning that program around in one year. They're really fun. They're deep too. They they play nine guys that play over I think thirteen oh, yeah. minutes a game. So they come at you in waves. They stay fresh. And um, to win thirty games a, a, in a year is you know that you you have you know you have to. Who's uh who's Kansas playing? Sanford. Yeah, I like Bucky. Sanford. I like Sanford there. I mean, I I know that McCl- uh, who is it McCl- McClusters or some Bucky guy Mc- that scored Bucky McMillan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they, they frenetic pace. They're they're I think they're top five in tempo. Um, so they might try to speed up Kansas a little bit. And if they can, if they can, if they can shoot the cover off of it. They're going to give people fits. Um, I, that those probably jump out. The eleven sixes I like uh Oregon South Carolina yeah that's a good matchup or Dana Altman's just a hell of a coach in March and Folly Dante is a big dude he's healthy I like him in that matchup South Carolina's tough though um they're kind of one of those teams it's just like top to bottom they're just solid yeah they're everywhere I mean you know I still um I really feel like uh, the um the turning point was whenever that guy blocked sharp on that inbound play for us to tie the out of the game i mean that was a huge turning point uh i feel yeah. like um, the other, yeah they've got some athletes they're tough the other 12 fives in the other regions our boy andy kennedy he's in the I field lo- i love you ab man that uh is it vasquez i don't know mm-hmm. he can shoot the the strings off of it i think it is it, I, I like that. Um, San Diego State's good. Um, they're I, they're not they're not nearly as good as they were a year ago. But that twelve five is fun. Um, I, I think UAB's playing really good basketball. They won the the American. Um, and then on the flip side, on the other side of the bracket in the Houston region, James Madison, Wisconsin. I like yeah. I I took the Dukes to beat Wisconsin. I like JMU, another team that won thirty games. They're a lot of fun. I will say before we get to your final four, we're gonna we're gonna butt heads here a little bit. I got I got Houston winning the whole thing, Greg. Look, I, you know, um, I think I think that kick in the teeth in the Big Twelve title game they played oh, care. Look, they played off. Oh yeah, and you know, and a lot of people are leaning Iowa State, uh, you know, just because of that win. But um, man, it just you. It, I mean, I have so much respect for the UNLV teams that went undefeated, regardless of who they played. Like to go undefeated a whole year, and to like literally show up to the gym and win every single game. I mean, that's. I mean, to have. I mean, that's. Uh, that's tough. I mean, you have everybody coming after you. So um, I, I got. You know, I'm not uh, ruling Houston out, but um, they are lacking a little depth. But if anybody could get it done, uh, Kelvin Sampson can definitely get it done. Call Drew Moak of USA Benefits Group. He can help you with any of your health insurance needs. Drew is an Ole Miss grad located in Mississippi and licensed in seven states. He works with the nation's second largest health insurance brokerage with access to 35 different carriers, regular health plans, to life insurance, to dental and vision, and even Medicare. He has it all covered. Now more than ever, it is critical to have a health insurance agent who is local and accessible. So call Drew Moak at 601-953-8449. 
601-953-8449 and get your free quote today. The College Corner is headed to Oxford. Stop by their new location in the Oxford Commons off Sisk Avenue. They'll have 4,000 square feet of Rebel gear ready for your trip to the Grove. On your next trip to Oxford, stop by the College Corner or our other great locations in Ridgeland and Flowood. Hats, shirts, polos, pullovers, sweats, T-shirts. College Corner has it all. And as always, you can visit us online at collegecornerstore.com. That's collegecornerstore.com. The College Corner, where your game day apparel meets. Yeah, I was going to say, they, they're they an experienced team. Um, I like got Arizona some... also. They're sne- I mean, you know, they've got some, in, you know, um, what's it? Caleb White? No, not um, uh, no, Caleb, it? Caleb Love, yeah. Caleb Love, God, he's a gamer, you know, and uh, they've got some inside presence with some really, really tall uh, uh, guy. And uh, I, I like Arizona also, so – uh, there's a lot of teams that, you know, can sneak through. I, I mean, my my lock that I want to throw out that you can put $100 on is Kentucky to win the East. Okay. I like I like Kentucky. I got them going to the Elite Eight. I have them losing to Houston. But that's a team, man, they're just so loaded with talent. If I would love to see that Kentucky-Houston game. God, I'd love to see it. That would be, that would be a – Ton of I fun. mean, you've got the three-point shooting. I mean, you know, uh, and, you know, the I just – I think that would be a really awesome uh, matchup. And, you know, you've got those matchups that can, can end up can happening. You know, there's so many intriguing games. And that's what's so great about this tournament. You know, I think uh, – I almost thought they were going to match North Carolina up with Arizona, you know, to where – in the same bracket to where, you know, that to get to lead A because Caleb Love used to go – you know, went to oh, North no, they, Carolina. Oh, they are. Oh, they are okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Ari- yeah, Arizona's the Ari- oh, you you know that was on. You know there was For probably sure. something. I mean, you know they've got to do stuff like this, you know, because everybody looks at their bracket and like, oh, I see what they're trying to do. So, man, you know, I think Creighton's another team. I think Marquette's another team that you got to watch out for. Yeah. Uh, I know Marquette's. Uh, I think did, are they best? Is the best player coming back? Or I know he was hurt in the last uh, game or so. But that Big East is brutal, man. I mean, you've got Marquette that scores a lot of points. You've got oh, yeah, they, that they kind of ate themselves alive this year. Yeah. So, um, are you I, talking you about know, are you talking I, about Tyler Kolick? Yeah. Yeah. See, him? I believe he's back. Um, okay. He's a the, gamer, okay. Man. So Shaka Smart said the plan is for him to play. He's got to go through a progression this week. Once we get back on the practice court, we'll be able to continue that progression. There's no way he's going to sit out. He's going to play. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I think, I mean, if he can play and he can be healthy, I think they're going to be tough. I'm trying to think of another um, sleeper. I, I like that Grand Canyon, man, for some strange reason. Yeah, I got um, – I, I was pretty chalky. My Elite Eight is a one, a three, a one, a three, a one, a two, and a one, and a two. My final four is three ones and a two. I got I got UConn and Arizona and Houston and Purdue. I fell for the bait again. I'm taking Purdue to go deep. They never do. Maybe they do it this year. Uh and then I got Houston beating UConn. I I think I think the Cougars can can keep UConn from re, from repeating. I um I I don't have my uh my thing with me, but um uh, I'm trying to think what all I did, but you know, I, another team I like, I like Florida. You know, they've, they've been playing really good ball. And uh, where did they get that coach? Todd Golden? Yeah. He was at San Francisco. Yeah. He was he was on the short list for Ole Miss. He, he was uh, – San Francisco's a tough job. The West Coast Conference, you know, oh, Gonzaga yeah. and, and St. Mary's dominate, and, and he made them competitive. But he's done a hell of a job at Florida. Um I will say that the one thing that gives me pause about Florida, because I do like them, is when, when Micah Hamlin oh, yeah, got, got hurt. Yeah, um, I forgot that he got hurt. And he's a big part of that team, seven-footer. Um, yeah, I forgot about that. But, um, look, I, they, they've got some big dudes, and, and I like them. Um, they've got some shot makers. I, that's the key, I think, in March. you, you got to have dudes that can just make shots and clutch moments, and you got to defend, and, and that's – that's why I picked Houston. I think yeah. they, they smother I'm people defensively. About Tennessee. I mean, Dalton Connect is an unbelievable <laughs> well, player, but well, that's another just, school that 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 you know I, I joke with all my 
Tennessee friends, like I call Rick Barnes Mr. February because yeah. in March he forgets how to coach. Yeah. Um, but this, and, and this, I think, uh, this Tennessee I think, uh, team actually, is loaded. I think the Action Sports Network uh, posted him and the Virginia coach are the least profitable um, coaches in March. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Rick Barnes, hell of a coach during the regular season. He always is. Um, just with Tennessee, he just can't get over the hump. But if, if any team is going to do it, it's this Tennessee team. They're – they're old, they're experienced, and then you've got the shot maker, the superstar, and connect. Um, I got them in the Elite Eight. I have them running into Purdue, and I think Purdue finally gets over the hump and gets to the Final Four. Um, but, yeah, I mean, look, regardless of what your bracket does or, you know, how good you – you know, it's still fun. Like, you can you can, oh, have, yeah. you can have a shit bracket, and you're still going to love watching every game. I mean, I'm always the big fan of um... – um the girls that do it that which uh color they like better like or which mascot or which uniforms are like that usually works a lot nine times out of ten um but no i it's just i don't know it's just a real cool thing to do just to get your bracket and get some beers and get some or a bottle of whiskey and be like oh no i like i'm telling you I'm telling you, Illinois, you know it just you know you just come out of the woodworks with something like Illinois is gonna go to the final four Hey, they, you never know. They're playing really play, good, man. They're playing they're play really well. good. They're playing um, good. You know, that's another say, team I kind of, I kind of sneaky like too. I will say, my, we, we, we did, we did the mascots for my two year old for her to do her bracket. And, oh, yeah. Let's, let's go over this. Can we please go over this? So what, her, what you got? So her final four is BYU, Kentucky, TCU, and Arizona. So she likes cats. She she likes saying wildcat over and over. And then every time I said T, instead of TCU, I would say frog. And she would she was all about frogs. I don't know why she likes BYU. Uh, I guess just because of the cougar. I mean, cougars, yeah. I, I, mean, I said I, I said, mean, I like cougars. Earlier in the bracket, like first second round, I was saying the school names, and then I had to make it easier. Um, but she has Arizona winning it all. And then um, my four year old just just went haywire. Uh, with his bracket, he he's big on Sanford. Loves Sanford for some reason. Don't know why. Um, but uh, that's the bottom yeah. half, right? Sanford's in the bottom bottom half. Oh. Uh, let me pull it up. I think they're in the top right. If I'm not okay, mistaken. yeah, they're in the east. I think. But uh, but he's got St. Peter's winning it all. He's got oh the, wow! He's got so he's peacocks. a pe- he, he likes a pe- he likes them peacocks. Look, his look, his final four is 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 outrageous. Drake, Western Kentucky, St. Peter's, and Arizona. So, hey, this- Western Kentucky, sneaky good. They might can get through the to the Sweet Sixteen. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't know, but but yeah, I. And you're it, what's funny is you're going over and you're like, all right, you sure you want to pick them? You know, it's like Purdue versus uh, Montana State. And he's like, mm, Montana State. And you're like, do you, are you sure you want Montana State the, over Purdue? You know? <laughs> the first time he said Sanford, we kind of laughed. And and he's four, but he just straight face just turned and was like, I like Sanford. So we're like, okay. <laughs> I guess maybe well, he's been. It sounds to, like you got a kid going to Sanford. Maybe he's been to Homewood and we don't know about it. And he's just, you know, <laughs> just loved the campus. But um it is a nice campus. I will give. I mean, it is a very formal, <laughs> nice campus. Yeah. Uh, all right. Real quick before we get out of here, what's uh, what's uh, going the horses? on? In, in, uh, yeah. in, well, how the see, horses we got, doing? Uh, we got the um the Kentucky well a Kentucky Derby prep this weekend at the Louisiana Derby, which is at the fairgrounds in New Orleans. So they've got the uh, Louisiana Oats and the Louisiana Derby back to back on Saturday. So. When you click on NBC and you see uh, horses running around in a circle, I'm sorry you're not being able to watch golf or some other uh, event that they could be uh, advertising. So, but yeah, put it on NBC. Watch the Kentucky Oats. Uh, throw some, throw a couple dollars down. Maybe d- d- drink you a little mint julep. Get prepped for the Kentucky Derby. So, um, my filly runs on Sunday, which uh, she was going to run last Sunday, but. She got rained out, and uh, so they um, pushed the card to Sunday. So she'll be running at 11 a.m. on um, 
on Sunday morning, I was thinking about, you know where a good brunch, you like a good brunch place in New Orleans? Or um, I usually just go right by the track. They've got a breakfast spot by the track. But mm. I really don't feel Actually, like getting beignets, you know, going down there and fighting. Well, then you, beignets. Yeah, you got to wait in line if you're going to Dumont. Honestly, I don't know. Uh, I'm probably going to go to the uh, Seahorse Grill across the street from the fairgrounds and probably have a what is my that? usual, uh, which is a um, Miller High Life and a, um, t- a Tillman's Dew. Is that what it is? Tillman's Dew. It's a sky. It's, oh, it's Tillamore. Tillamore yeah, Dew. Yeah. And then this yeah. guy tell, talks about his son being an MMA fighter. So I just like, you know. Just try to drink my Miller High Life and get out of there. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if it's like a true brunch spot, but if you go to um in New Orleans, oh yeah, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. If you go, hey, to, Houston, Houston, what's your place in New Orleans you like? <laughs> it, they do they make like homemade pop tarts and stuff? I forgot what it's called. Well, if Hotel Monteleone, they've got oh, the Carousel okay. Bar. Okay. So it's more about the bar, like a carousel, like it rotates, but they've got like small bites and stuff. I, I can't even, I don't know if I've ever truly done New Orleans brunch. I've done lunch. I've done happy hour. I've done dinners. I don't know if I've ever done a true brunch in New Orleans. I'm trying to think, where's the place that I always go that has the frozen mugs? Uh, Lucy's or Lucy's or L-I-V. Anyway, they have it's home of the frosted mug. They literally bring you a frosted mug, and it's like the it's just so good every time they they um it's Luzeels or something like that. It's right there by the racetrack, but I highly recommend that place. It's apparently, there's a the place. Place. apparently, there's a place called Willa Jean that does homemade pop tarts. Oh, and then there's another one that's Melissa's Southern Style Kitchen that does them. Hey, Houston. What's uh what's your place in New Orleans that you like so much? Your bunch place. Bunch place? Yeah. Turkey and the Wolf. Turkey and the Wolf. Oh and yeah. Rise. And then what's the other one? What's the breakfast spot? Molly's Rise and Shine. Molly's Rise and Shine. That's what it is. Molly's uh, Rise. Okay. And Shine. I okay, so I didn't so know. I, I didn't have my computer in front of me so I could do some research. I had my had to open up the door and yell at Houston and <laughs> Yeah, Turkey and Wolf, I know they're big. Uh, they're known for their sandwiches. Yeah. Um, and then Man, I love doing... talking food. I love talking food. <laughs> I mean, yeah, come on. We could just do this all day. Um, they're actually coming. Turkey and Wolf is coming to Nashville next week doing a little pop-up. I'm going to check them out. Well, I'm glad I mentioned something. Yeah, I so yeah, I, I know they're they're big on the sandwich game. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you're getting prepped for, for the Derby, um, yeah, make to sure to, it. make sure to check out black type, uh, thoroughbreds. You can go to black type tb.com world-class horses, world-class experience. Um, basically if you, if you haven't heard about them on the show yet, or haven't, uh, you know, seen them, just, heard about yeah, just them, click on the website and click it. That's very, I mean, the website just, you know, explains everything. They it's, had, we had, very, they had two horses, uh, run last week and. Um, they, she, man, she ran a really, really good third place and man, she's just had some tough luck. You know, you gotta have that. Yeah. You gotta have some, you know, tough luck to get some good luck. So, uh, she went out to the lead and, um, just got clipped at the wire right there at the end. So they're going to give far and few a little break, uh, but give her a couple of weeks off and, uh, hopefully get a refresh and maybe bring her back to Kentucky and break her maid in at Keeneland. But, um, they've got, um, they got Barbatina. Uh, she's going to be running in New York. Uh, they were going to run her in Kentucky. She's uh, they're uh, moving her to New York to try to get some Derby, so get some Kentucky Oaks points to lock up her uh, to that spot for the Kentucky Oaks. So, um, yeah, man, four years in a row to have a horse run at the Kentucky Oaks is a pretty pretty nice uh, feather to have in the hat. So, with that being said, yeah, uh, check them. Just click the website. You know, the, this. Send them an email. Tell them you're interested, and just say you know they'll 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 talk to you. And uh, um, you know, honestly, you can uh, invest with uh, Hotty Toddy Thoroughbreds. I literally just uh, opened up my first LLC, so um, uh, my, my Philly's going to be running under the first time under Hotty Toddy Thoroughbreds. I hadn't set up my website or my LLC. I mean, I just set up my LLC so my Philly can run under it. But 
haven't set up my website or Twitter or anything. So uh, kind of nervous because um, she's the favorite. And so whenever you're the favorite, you're everybody expects you to win. And, you know, it's kind of a lot of pressure when everybody, you know, comes up to you. Oh, your Philly's going to run off the page here, meat man. And I'm like, I hope so, man. You know, I hope so. Uh, you know, you never know what happens in a horse race. And I just, man, I'm getting freaked out about just talking about it. But she's going to do good. Uh, she's been training really well with Shane Wilson. And uh, uh, I have a lot of confidence in her. And I think that she's going to win. And um, hopefully I get my t picture taken uh, Sunday morning with her and uh, the winter circle. So uh, it's just one of those things that you get to, uh, you find what you find and you enjoy what you enjoy. So um, give you a little update on the Louisiana Derby. If you want to bet on the Louisiana Derby. Um, so the Louisiana Derby is Saturday and the uh, track Phantom is the one that finished second in the Risen Star that Sierra Leone beat. So um, I like track uh, Phantom this time. Um, it just depends on what kind of trip he gets. Um, with a horse race, it just depends on the time. So always look at the numbers. So if the first numbers go really, really fast or really, really slow. So that's what's so good about Bob Baffert at the, at the Kentucky Derby is his horse would get out to the lead and dictate the speed the whole time uh, that they go around. So like yeah. if a bot, if the horse is getting pressure where he's like trying, you know, where they're going fast, when the horse doesn't need to be going fast, he'll run out of gas. So the closers will come. So I'm a big fan of the closers. Um, you know, I kind of like catching freedom. Uh, I, if, it just depends on what uh, kind of trip track, uh, track phantom gets. Um, if the three, if Johnny V takes the three and uh, goes out to the lead and uh, puts some pressure on track phantom and that first, you know, quarter mile goes, you know, a little bit faster than normal, then, you know, the closers are going to get to him. So um, you always got to keep an eye with it. That's, I always like to ask people how they like to win horse races. And uh, my thing is, is I always like to come from the back, you know, like everybody's concentrated on the, you know, the three or four horses up front and just out of nowhere, you know, your horse just comes and just clips them right at the wire. So that's what, I, uh, that's kind of what um, Sierra Leone did with uh, track phantom last time. So, uh, but the closers uh, it just depends on those first couple of uh, numbers that pop, pop up, but, I like catching freedom. Uh, Flavian Prep is riding catching freedom this time. So that's a little upgrade on that. And uh, maybe, you know, don't count out uh, Tuscan Gold or uh, uh, catching freedom. I like uh, both of those also. So, man, you know, you just go have fun with it. You know, throw $20 on it, pick a number, and uh, maybe he wins. That You know, that's uh, pick your, pick your uh, whoever, you, the name you like or like the jockey or like the colors. It's just like the, it's just like the bracket. Just yeah. uh, have fun with it and throw throw five dollars on it with your buddy and um and just have fun with it. But tune in on NBC. Uh, L.A. Derby is this week uh, Saturday, and I wish my my Philly was on national television because I would be you know see me doing backflips if she if she wins. We'll be on the lookout for hotty toddy thoroughbreds. I'm sure once. Uh, oh yeah, I'm gonna try to get it cranked up. Yeah, I'm gonna try to get a, a little separate stop sponsorship going. Once it's live, we'll we'll get you the information. Um, check out black type thoroughbreds, black type tb.com. Email them info at black type tb.com or call them 713-540-9000. Um, but expertise, integrity, experience, those are their, their three pillars there. They've got a whole team comprised of horse racing fanatics that years of experience buying, racing, breeding. Yep all that. So yeah, just go invest. Um, it could just be something that you do for yeah, fun. And you don't have to invest. You can literally say, Hey, we're thinking about coming to Keeneland and, you know, coming to the race and just want to see what it's all about. I have uh, my, one of my uh, yearly goals is to take five people to the race, to the races. That's never been. So uh, we'd love to take somebody that's never been to a race before. So it's a good time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, also a great time, LB's Meat Market, 2008 University Avenue. Go get you uh, some meat for the rest of the week and the weekend. Um, also check out College Corner, get you some merch, get ready for uh, this weather to turn, start a uh, sun staying out a little bit longer, 
Yeah, so, I mean, it's like 45 degrees right now. So I'm just uh, sitting here trying know. to figure it out, it's, man. It's close. Like, we're, we're, we're almost there. Like, I feel like this is the last little cold snap. So I think it is, too. Like, my birthday is next weekend. So hopefully uh, by, by the time my birthday rolls through, April, April Fool's gets everybody fooled, and uh, we're back to good weather. Yeah, I know. I know the pollen is out. I know that for sure. It, yeah, that that is that is a guarantee. Um, but yeah, stay locked in. OMSpirit.com. We'll have coverage of baseball, uh, NCAA tournament. The uh, Lady Rebs will be taking on Marquette Friday in South Bend, Indiana, in that seven ten matchup. We'll have coverage of that. Oh, we got to give a little shout out to the softball team for the two out of three at LSU. Oh, That's awesome. Dude. That's I mean, so I, awesome. I mean, I, I'm I'm a big fan of them. I I try, you know, it's awesome to to go to Baton Rouge and take two out of three out of any sport or whatever sport. From yeah, <laughs> previously undefeated LSU, number two. Well, they in the got country. a big weekend. Georgia's coming to town. Uh, my buddy Jay Goodwin, um, his daughter plays for Georgia, and she. Uh, that they they're tough so uh yeah. they, they got they're gonna have their hands full this weekend yeah shout out to uh jamie traxel and that staff they're doing a great job um yeah that, that was a big weekend uh getting that dub on monday uh, i guess it was extended to monday just because of spring break but um yeah. big big road sec series and i like the all State. red jerseys i like that all red jersey i do i do too i thought it was sharp um, there's some there's some color combos i'm kind of like eh, but it's like there, there's a couple of them that I really, really like. For some strange reason, I like the the all powder blue and the all red. For some strange reason, I like that all red. I, look, it red, red and blue. It's hard to screw up. Um, I like. Oh, those. and I'm a big fan of the pitcher Kamethis. I love. I'm a big fan of her. I like her a lot. The pitcher of the week. Big, big weekend. Um, yeah, outstanding. I don't know how to um, say her name. Is it Kermetheus? Do I? I need to find out because I butcher yeah. it every week. Uh, I yeah, need to it's find pretty out. bad. Um, Maybe we need to bring her on the show. I'd love to interview her. But yeah, I'm just kidding. She's she's dealing right <laughs> now. So um, yeah, shout out to Ole Miss softball. Um, yeah, we'll have coverage at OM Spirit. Uh, we'll have more podcasts this week, so stay locked in. Spotify, YouTube, on the website, we'll have it all for you. This has been the flagship. Y'all have a good rest of the weekend. Stay safe and uh, hopefully enjoy the weather if it uh, if it warms up. So for Greg over there, I'm Zach. We'll talk to y'all next week.